You know that kids rhyme, sticks and stones can break my bones, but words will never hurt me? Anyone who's ever been in first grade knows it's a lie. <laughs> not only is it a lie, but it's not Jewish. Because here's the truth about words. Words hurt. Words can really hurt. And centuries ago, our ancestors realized that malicious words can not only destroy reputations, but they can destroy communities. Because there was something called the blood libel, the infamous blood libel, where there was a bogus accusation that Jews were using matzo, blood, children, the blood of Christian children to make matzah. And it resulted through the words that were disseminated in the massacres of hundreds in Jewish communities. That's words. Words inspired riots. So words hurt. That's why I had you look at the prayer on page 62. And if you want, you can turn to it now just to glance at some of the sections that I'm going to reference. The end of the Amidah, the silent prayer, the one that is not spoken, we have this prayer that reminds us of the power of words. My God, guard my speech from evil and my lips from deception before those who slander me. I will hold my tongue. I will practice humility. Open my heart to your Torah that I may pursue your mitzvot. And as for all who think evil of me, cancel their designs and frustrate their schemes. Act for your own sake and for the sake of your power and so on and so on and so on. We end this prayer of personal supplication. We're standing, we're reciting the prayer silently with these words because we have experienced the destructive power of words and we know what they can do and we're reminded in this prayer to guard our own speech from evil and our lips from deception because we should know what words can do because we've been the victim of what words can do. Well, if words hurt individuals and communities centuries ago, when, and inspired our ancestors to pen that prayer, they could never have anticipated the destructive power of words in this generation. There has never been a generation on this earth where malicious words can spread as quickly and as broadly and as dangerously as our own. Hateful words spoken today can reach more eyes in the blink of the eye than there were people on the planet in the days when this prayer was probably written. And unlike those placards put on the walls of buildings in ancient days that could quickly be torn down or painted over, our words endure in bits and bites for what seems like an eternity. Words hurt. And I was reminded of it last month when a colleague new to town found herself the brunt of an evil troll attack. Now, for those of you who still think trolls are the, the likes of uh, what uh, is in the Fellowship of the Rings, let me tell you that the word has a new meaning. Trolling is a campaign of uh, negative digital aspersions cast against one person by a malicious network of, well, let's call them what they are, bottom feeders. Someone who she didn't know, this colleague of mine, um, and who had no connection to her, someone or another was prowling for new victims and Googled her name for some reason and came up with some years-old posts that my colleague had put up, and they indicated this particular colleague's ideology, this rabbi's ideology. And this internet troll used public media accounts to basically post a series of screeds against her. Things like, can you believe she calls herself a rabbi, and how dare she take that stand, or rabbis can't take political positions, which, by the way, is wrong, but she posted it anyway. And that got the other trolls started, and they laid into her. They called her names, they derided her appearance, and they trashed the synagogue where she worked. And it was painful for her. And compassionate and thoughtful people who happened to read it were disturbed to find it on their friends' timelines and disturbed by its tone and by its intent. And it was one hell of a welcome to Los Angeles, I'll tell you that. And by the way, this was Jew on Jew. There was no anti-Semitism here. So Judaism has its own term for trolling. It's motzi shem ra, creating a bad name. This week's parasha has the word, is called shemot. It comes from the book of, it's from the first section of the book of Exodus. Shemot means names. Shem, motzi shem ra, creating a bad name. Shemot is the plural of shem, the word for name. Exodus is the story of a ragtag bunch of slaves who coalesce to become the people that is named Israel. 
And the book begins by listing names, by naming names, if, if you will, the legendary progenitors of the Jewish people, Reuben, Shimon, Levi, Judah, Benjamin, the 12 tribes. And it continues to tell the story of how this disparate group of individuals developed a collective name, Israel. And the book seeks to develop for this name a reputation of a people redeemed by God, to develop for them a good name, an honor, honorable reputation. So we have known the power of a good name for centuries. And we know that maligning a good name can devastate an individual and, as I mentioned earlier, destroy communities. And now we know, this group, that this is a violation of the deepest Jewish principles to de disseminate words that desecrate a name. And yet, we push the button, we, set, we hit send, and we pass on the malicious words that come into our inbox. And we may even post our own condemnations online, not of the ideas we find disagreeable, but of the character and being and appearance, or whatever it is, nothing to do with the ideas of the person who holds these ideas. And we pass around jokes, perhaps, that damage reputations. And we condemn from a distance without having all the facts. And we consume a media that does the very same. And worse, when we do it, we're role models for the children who learn to vilify each other online. And while an adult psyche is better prepared to handle the pain, youthful egos are sometimes damaged beyond repair. And yet, the prayer book says it. Jews read it twice a day. Oh God, guard my speech from evil and my lips from deception. Today, it might better be written, oh God, guard my keyboard from evil, and my fingers from deception. So here we are. Happy New Year. The dawning of a new year. And we can still gaze back on a rather unfortunate year. A year where words became even cheaper. A year where facts were confused with opinions. A year where rumors became incentives to violence. So I've got a secular New Year's resolution for you. Make it stop. Make it stop. Don't consume it, neither on the computer screen or on the TV screen. Turn it off. Turn it off in your house. Encourage others to turn it off. And if it finds its way into your inbox or somehow on your Facebook page, don't pass it on. In fact, delete it. Cancel their designs and evil schemes. That's what the prayer says. Hit delete. And if you dare, when it does come your way, respectfully and nicely and without rancor, let that sender or poster know or that close, dear Facebook friend of yours know that you appreciate neither their sentiments nor the content that they've posted. And remind them that as a Jew, you're acutely aware of how words hurt. So gazing into 2018 from the perspective of 2017, we have perhaps good reason to despair. However, I'm suggesting that right here and right now, we can start a revolution. Each of us can start a revolution because one send sends things out into the ether that are re read and heard and seen by hundreds, if not more. We can reclaim our own space of digital dignity, both through what our digits do and what we allow to pervade our senses via the digital media onslaught that, con onslaught that constantly surrounds us. We can start a revolution simply by making sure that when words might hurt, the words stop with us, that we are the ones who make sure to frustrate the designs of those folks who might seek to hurt or take down another. The revolution begins here, and it begins right now. Ken Hiratsong, so may it be.